in. Now for this week's video I thought I would do something a little bit different. So this week's video is actually going to be a Q&A. Now this week I put out a post on the Kate Spanning's Facebook page in the Instagram stories and on my YouTube community tab and so many of you sent in different questions so thank you so much. Now there was such a variety of questions, some of them are about me, some of them are about my cake making journey and some of them are cake related questions. Now for some of the questions I do think they actually need their own videos as they need a little bit more of a tutorial to explain them so if I don't answer your question then I definitely will try my best to make some more videos with these questions in the new year. Okay so there are a lot of questions so let's get started. So the first question that I got asked a few times I think on Instagram and over on YouTube was where am I actually from or what country am I from? So I'm from the UK and I live in the southeast of England. Originally I am from the county of Kent but two years ago Alex my husband and I moved to East Sussex so we're in a bit more of a rural setting now rather than in a big town which we absolutely love. Now the second question, this one I got asked over on Instagram but I actually get asked this quite a lot and it was when did I start making cakes? Now I started like a lot of you guys did, just starting baking as a hobby, just something fun to do and I started in my early 20s. So I've been baking for around 16 or 17 years now and as soon as I started decorating cakes I just fell in love with that aspect of it and haven't stopped. So another question that I got asked which really got me thinking was a few different people asked what was my favourite cake that I've ever made. Now I have made so many cakes over the years that I've loved but I think two cakes that really stand out because they had quite a lot of meaning for me was first of all a cake that I made back in 2011 so I had to look it up and it was actually a birthday cake that I made for my niece Lexi so when she was two she used to watch Fifi and the Flower Tots and I don't know if any of you ever seen it but Fifi lived in a giant watering can so I actually made the watering can for her cake and this was the first kind of really big carved cake that I'd made and I spent three days making this cake and absolutely had so much fun making it. I will find a picture and I'll put it up on the screen and the little figure of Fifi I actually made it out of modeling clay so she could keep it on her shelf so um, I really loved doing that cake and another cake that I really loved and meant so much to me was a few years ago when the Cakes by Ninja YouTube channel hit 100,000 subscribers and I don't know if any of you seen it but I actually made a baking themed cake with a mixing bowl and a mixer on it so it was an anti-gravity cake and I had so much fun making that cake and it just meant so much to me because I was making it in celebration of this huge milestone that the channel had hit. Now if any of you haven't seen that cake, I will put a picture of it here but I also have a video tutorial for it which I will link to in the description below. But that's two of my favourite cakes that kind of stand out from over the years. So the next question that I got asked was actually one about my videos rather than my cakes and this was asked over on the YouTube community tab and it was what software do I use for editing my videos? Now I have a background in design and in multimedia so when I came to make the videos I already had a bit of experience with this software but I use Adobe Premiere to edit all my videos. Now please do let me know in the comments below if you are interested in finding out a bit more about how I make my videos and what I use and how I edit them and if you'd like to see a video on that. Okay, so the next question was what food colourings do I use? So I've just been and grabbed some of them but I do have so many little pots and tubes of food colouring. Now I tend to use water-based 
food gels um, a lot and you would have seen quite a few of these in some of my videos. So some of the ones that I do tend to pick up first are the Colour Splash ones. So you do see me use the Colour Splash Raspberry in a lot of my videos. Now the reason that I love these is just the tubes they're in, they are so easy to use and they're a lot less messy than some of the other little pots that you can get. Um, some of the other brands that I love to use are the Sugar Flare colours, um, especially their extra colours. So this is the red extra and it's so concentrated that you just need the tiniest little amount. And I think they do the extra in red, green and black. So I really love those. I also love the Wilton colours and the Sweet Stamp colours. Um, so so yeah, ones in little pots. Also for um, if I'm working with chocolate or candy melts, I tend to use the color mill colors. So these are the oil based colors. Um, you can also use these for buttercream and ganache as well. I just tend to use my normal water based ones for those, I think just out of habit. Um, and then use these ones for chocolate and candy melts. Now, the next question that I got asked was, are there any cake fails that I can remember? Now, there have been so many. I've been baking for so long and not everything has always gone to plan. And I think that is important for me to share with you as I know that on the tutorials, everything can look amazing, but I really do practice and practice and practice those. Um, and I have done throughout my whole cake decorating journey. If things haven't gone well, um, just kind of try again and just keep going and try and figure out why things haven't worked. Now one of the biggest, I guess, cake fails that I can remember um, is kind of more about ingredients and about my buttercream. Now when I first started making um, cakes years ago just as um, a hobby, I would use stalk for making my cakes, which I actually still do but I would then use this for my buttercream. Now I do have a video tutorial where I go through tips and tricks about my buttercream, but if you've ever used this, and it's something that I do mention in the video, spread that comes in a little tub, even if it says it's for baking, is great to use in cakes, but if you use it for buttercream, it will never firm up as it's always made to remain soft. So I used to make my cakes and I couldn't figure out why my buttercream was so soft, why I couldn't get it as firm as everyone else's, why did my cake squidge down and I got little lines around the side where my buttercream was coming out. And the reason was I was just using the wrong butter. I needed to use a block of real butter. And when I found this out years ago, this blew my mind and just changed my cakes so much. So if you do struggle with your buttercream, I will put a link in the description below where I go into more detail talking about what butter you should use. Now I did get quite a few questions about buttercream, so I will just try and run through them. So one of them was, why does my butter cream goes soft when I start piping. Now one of the reasons could be the butter you're using. So if you are using a spread then really do try a block of butter. The thing to remember is if you've got a block of butter and you put it into the fridge it will go back to being really hard and the same happens with buttercream. Now another reason if you are piping cupcakes and your buttercream could be getting really soft is actually from the heat of your hands as you're holding your your piping bag so if you are finding this is happening what you could do is just fill your bag with less buttercream so maybe fill it so you can pipe one or two cupcakes then add some more buttercream in and that way the heat from your hand isn't around all the buttercream melting it as you pipe Another question was, what can you do if your buttercream is too thick? Now, one of the things is you wanna make sure that you're mixing your buttercream for long enough. Buttercream is actually quite stiff as you're mixing it in the first few minutes. But if you mix it for around five minutes, it will turn really creamy and go a lot softer. Now, if you do find that your buttercream still is a little bit too thick, maybe you can't pipe it, what you can do is just add a small dash of milk into your buttercream and mix that through and this will just soften it slightly. 
Now I did get a few questions on buttercream and popping buttercream in the fridge. So I am actually gonna answer those together. So one of the questions was, do you have to put a cake in the fridge when you add layers of frosting? And the next one was, should a cake be chilled before covering in fondant? Now, the reason that we put a cake in the fridge when we've added on that buttercream is to firm up that buttercream so that we can go on to the next stage of decorating. You don't have to put the cake in the fridge if you don't want to, especially if it's a buttercream cake. So maybe you've put the buttercream between your layers and you've iced around the side and you're perfectly happy with how it looks. So unless that filling or frosting that you've added onto the cake needs to be in the fridge, you can leave it out whilst you're decorating it and also leave it out before you serve it. Now the second part of that question, should a buttercream cake be chilled before adding your fondant? The answer is you don't have to, but the reason again for putting it in the fridge is so that that butter in your buttercream firms up. This is gonna make it so much easier when you then cover the cake in fondant as it's gonna be a little bit more sturdy. So if it was me, I would pop my cake in the fridge before I covered it in fondant. That leads me on to another question, which was why do you get air bubbles in the side of your cakes once you've covered them in fondant and smoothed it down? Now there are are two things that can happen to give you air bubbles or bulges. The first one is a bulge that runs all the way around your cake and this is because your buttercream is too soft so the weight from the cakes above or the fondant that you draped over the top is actually pushing down and it's squidging that buttercream out slightly which is giving you this ring all the way around. Now one thing if you are getting this is you do need to make sure that you're using the right butter in your buttercream and it might be that your butter cream is a little bit soft or your filling is a little bit soft. If you do have quite a soft filling inside your cake, what you can do is create a dam around the outside of your cake layer, either in a thick buttercream or a ganache, and then you can put the soft filling inside. That way, when the weight comes down, it isn't going to ooze out the side. Now, if you're finding that you get just one bulge on the side of your cake, so it looks a lot more like just an air bubble. This is because air is trapped between your cake and your fondant, so that air is being pushed out. One of the reasons this can happen is when you're filling your cake layers and you're adding in your buttercream, you put the next one on and you fill around the outside with your buttercream. Now, if there is a gap between your cake layer where your buttercream is and the buttercream on the outside, then that air bubble is gonna push its way out. I really hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna try and explain this without a cake. Now, a few things that you can do is make sure that your cakes are leveled before you stack them. This way, when you stack them, you're not gonna have any large gaps on the side. So if you're if you imagine your cake is domed and you add another domed cake on, you get kind of a V shape as you go up the cake. So if that's not completely filled with buttercream, you can get air bubbles in there which will push their way out. So one thing that you can do is level off your cakes first of all and make sure when you add your layer of buttercream you're coming right to the edge. That way when you add your next completely flat layer on the top and you go around with your crumb coat, all of those gaps have been completely filled so there isn't any space for an air bubble to be. Another thing that you want to make sure is when you add your fondant over the top that that fondant is completely stuck to the outside of your cake. One thing that you can do if you've had a buttercream cake in the fridge is when you take it out before you add on your fondant is just run a really tiny thin layer of buttercream around the edge just so that fondant has something to stick onto. Again, if you're using ganache, one thing that I like to do is either just add a small amount of boiled water around the edge, or I usually mix this with a small amount of icing sugar just so it makes a tacky glue. You can run this around the edge of your cake so that when you lay your fondant over the top, it will completely stick. That way there isn't any areas where an air bubble could appear and it could push its way out. 
I really hope that answers that question. <laughs> now, there was also quite a lot of questions about fondant, so I'm gonna go through those as quickly as I can. Now, the first thing that I wanna mention is I know that sometimes people get quite confused when we talk about fondant as it's not actually called the same thing everywhere. So fondant, I think, is more of an American term for it. In the UK, and if you watch quite a few of my earlier videos, I used to refer to it as icing, as that's what we used to call it, icing or rollable icing in the UK. Um, but it's become a bit more known as fondant. Also, sugar paste um, is exactly the same thing. So if someone's talking about icing or fondant or sugar paste, they're talking about the same thing. So the paste that you would roll out to add over on your cakes. Now one question in regards to fondant that I get asked so much and I didn't want any of you guys to think that I was ignoring you was a lot of people are asking for my fondant recipe. Now I actually buy my fondant um, to use pre-made and you can either buy it in white or coloured. Um, but I know that a lot of you do struggle to get hold of fondant where you are. So I haven't forgotten, I haven't ignored it. This is a video that I do plan to do um, next year. I just wanna make sure that I give you a really good recipe um, as it's not something that I do tend to make a lot. So watch this space for a video um, coming out next year. So one of the questions that I got asked was, why does my fondant sometimes crack when I add it onto my cakes? And also why do I get a lot of elephant skin with my fondant. So this is where it just starts to rip slightly or you can see a lot of texture and this usually happens when you curve it over the side of your cake. Now different brands of fondant do work in different ways. Some are a bit more prone to this than others but you want to make sure that you're not drying out your fondant. So one thing that I always do um, is I use corn flour or sometimes um, it's known as cornstarch, to roll my icing or fondant out onto. Now, I know that some people do use icing sugar. I find that icing sugar, personally, really dries out the fondant that I'm using, whereas corn flour doesn't tend to to do this. So one thing that you could try if you are using icing sugar and you are finding that your fondant is cracking a lot, you switch over and try using corn flour as a dusting to roll it out on instead. Another thing that you can do is have a try of different fondants, um, different brands. Some do tend to have a lot more elasticity than others. Now, another question that I had was, what do you do if your fondant is too hard to knead? Now, from my experience of using different ones, Fondants that have more elasticity in them seem to be harder when they're in the packet. Um, now, you might get one of these and be like, I just can't use this. If I do have a really hard fondant, what I tend to do is pop this in the microwave on defrost for five seconds. Um, this seems to soften it slightly so that I can then knead it a bit more easily. But if you are finding that your fondants are cracking a lot, you are getting a lot of elephant skin, try and find one that does have a lot more elasticity to them, um, as this tends to work really well. It can take a little bit more time to smooth it down and to get that sharp edge, but you don't tend to get any of that elephant skin at all. The fondant that I tend to use that has a lot more stretch and elasticity to it is the Sugar Paste and also Smart Flex. Also, if you do cover a cake and you have cracks on your cake, one thing that you could do is try and fill that, and you can actually do this just by mixing a small amount of water with some fondant. So just in a bowl, mixing it up, and as it absorbs that water, it actually becomes a paste, which you can pop into any cracks. I do find that if you do this, it does end up slightly shinier, um, but it's a great way to cover it if you are struggling, and then you can pop on a flower or something to cover it over. Now, I really hope this is answering some of your questions and I hope that this video isn't gonna to be too long. So the next question was, how do I attach fondant flowers onto the side of my cakes? Now, whether you're attaching fondant flowers or gum paste flowers, you guys know I love making flowers. Um, one thing is you can attach um, especially if you're making fondant flowers, you might just wanna attach them to a cocktail stick and you can push this into your cake. If you're working with gum paste and you've attached wires, you wanna add these into 
um, some flower picks. Now these come in different sizes. Um, I have some large ones here and some small ones. So you can wrap your wire in some floral tape, push it inside the little flower pick and then push this into your cake. And that's gonna make it a lot more food safe than pushing a wire directly into the cake. You can also get some safety seal for any wires. Um, and this is just a product that you melt down in the microwave. You can dip the wires in and they get kind of a coating of wax that you can then push into the cake to make them food safe. Um, if you've got fondant flowers or gum paste flowers and you do want them to stick maybe to the side of your cake, what I tend to use is royal icing. So if you've added royal icing as a glue and you've push your flour on, as soon as that royal icing has set, it's just gonna hold that flour in place. Now, you guys know I love making flour videos, so let me know in the comments, did you want more videos on how to attach flowers onto your cakes, or is there any other information around flowers that you want to know that I can add into some more videos? Now, another question was, what can you add into cakesicles other than sponge and buttercream? Um, now, the first thing I would say is experiment with your flavors so you could add different flavor sponges you could add buttercream or cream cheese buttercream um, you could also add caramel or nutella um, jam you can also add brownies um, a really good one is to um, crumble down oreo cookies and add those in um, you could add cookies and sponge and just really experiment with them so i mean if you have any other ideas or something that you love adding to your cake schools that i didn't mention then please do leave that in the comments too i'd love to know okay so another question that i got was about tiered cakes and the question there was actually two of them so what are the sticks used for in tiered cakes can i use regular straws why do some people use straws and some people use dowels um now if if you haven't seen I do have a video tutorial showing how I prepare dough and stack my tiered cakes and I will put a link to this in the description below because I think that making sure that your tiered cake is done properly is so important so that it's structurally sound. Now choosing the right dough to use for your cakes is so important and I do have a few examples here. So you've got quite thick dowels, you've got, um, these are the easy dowels, so you've got round ones and square ones or you've got wooden dowels as well. I tend to make sure that I use dowels that come from cake decorating shops. This way you know that they've been tested or weight tested and you're able to use them for cakes rather than straws. Now a few things that I think are so important when thinking about creating tiered cakes is first of all you want to think about the board that you're using so you want to make sure that when your cake is on top it's not going to move and you're not going to have any flex in the board another thing is when you've got your dowels what you're actually trying to do is create tables inside your cake so your cake dowels become the legs of your tables these sit inside the cake below and then your cake on top sits on top of the top of your table. And then if you've got a higher stacked cake, you just carry on going. So think of your dowels as the legs to your tables. And what you want to make sure is that the legs of your tables can take the weight from the cakes above. You also want to make sure that your dowels are all exactly the same length. So one thing that I like to do is push my dowel into my cake, mark it, take it out and make sure that they're all exactly the same height. This way, when you put them into your cake, you're not going to have one leg of your table that is slightly higher or lower than the others. I mean, have you ever sat at a table where one leg is slightly shorter and you have a bit of a wobbly table? The exact same thing is gonna happen inside your cake. And especially if you're transporting your cake, you don't want part of that structure inside to start to wobble as this is gonna make your cake kind of fall over or move or bulge. Um, so it's really important to pick dowels that can support your cake. Um, I will put a link in the description below to my tiered cake video. So if you are new to creating tiered cakes or you have had some kind of issues with creating 
the structures or your cakes move in, then do check that video out as I do try and go through as many tips and tricks as I can. Okay, so the last few questions. One question that I got asked over on Instagram was, what is my three favorite cake decorating tools? And I really thought about this for so long and I came up with these three. So I'm classing modeling tools as one. Um, if I did have to narrow it down, I would probably say my Dresden tool. Now I use this, or I refer to it as my pointy tool. Um, I use this in almost every cake that I make, um, especially if I'm modeling. It's just so useful and you can do so many things with it. Um, also my ball tool. You guys know I love making gum paste flowers. So having a ball tool um, is a must. And these are actually the, one of the first things that I bought when I started cake decorating. So, um, and I've had these now for about 16 years. Um, this is my second ball tool. I did break one, um, but this Dresden tool, I've only have ever had this one. Next is a craft knife. Now, having a really sharp craft knife just to cut things away, cut fondant away, um, or work with models, um, that's really important. And also, these flexi smoothers. Now, when I got my set of flexi smoothers, and I haven't used these from the beginning of my cake decorating journey, but when they bought these out, and it's just flexible plastic. This was a game changer um, for getting those smooth, sharp edges on the top of your fondant cakes. I really love these um, and I use them with my paddle smoothers that you've probably seen in a lot of my videos. Um, but I really love these. So I would say if I had to pick three tools, um, it would probably be these three. Um, but there are so many different tools and ones that I use all the time. Um, but let me know, what are your three favorite tools? Okay, so if you are still here, thank you so much. I hope this video hasn't been so long. So the last question I'm gonna answer is, what do you think will be the cake trends of 2022? Um, now, I find this so difficult to kind of predict as trends just seem to just appear from nowhere. I think at the moment, using wafer paper and rice paper and things like that is really popular and it creates such delicate effects. So I can see that this will continue into 2022 and people will find different ways to use it and different ways to create different effects with it. Um, I think buttercream cakes have been popular for so long and this is gonna continue. I think maybe they might change in size. Um, so like six inch cakes are really popular, but I can see them getting slightly taller. I think um, this is something that I see on Instagram and I've seen kind of over the years, they've got a little bit taller and a little bit taller. Um, so I think kind of a few more kind of double barrel cakes might become a bit more popular. Um, I'm really hoping kind of gum paste flour cakes will become really popular. I absolutely love making them. And I think just making decorations and flowers to add onto your cakes rather than using like real flowers just looks so pretty. So I think that's one trend that I'm really hoping for that will become really popular, a lot more gum paste flowers. Um, but let me know in the comments below, what do you think are gonna be the trends of 2022? And do you know what? I cannot wait to try them out and see what people come up with. Okay, so there we have the answers to around 20 of your questions. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. It hasn't been too long and you will find some of the answers useful. If you have enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do let me know in the comments below. Now, if you're watching this video around the time that you upload it, I'm actually putting it up on Christmas Eve. So if you do celebrate, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas, but also a very happy and safe New Year. Thank you so much for watching all of my videos this year, and I can't wait to create more. So until next time, bye!